In this video I'll be reviewing the Miniware P906 power supply module. Capable of putting out up to 30 volts at 10 amps, it can be powered from several power sources including USB adapters, power bricks and even batteries. It features buck and boost modes so you have full control over the output voltage regardless of the input voltage. With the addition of the LCD module, you can also wirelessly control and monitor the power supply module to your heart's content. Inside the box you'll find the power supply which features a small screen and buttons to program the output power. The output banana sockets are located on the side. And at the rear we have two power input options in the form of a DC barrel jack and a type C USB port. A nice set of silicon jumper cables are included in the box. The P906 is modular, stackable and compatible with the P905 power supply module and the M01 display module. The display module can monitor and program several power supply modules using a wireless 2.4 GHz signal. This allows you to control each power supply module remotely and wire free. And I'm not exactly sure who needs this feature, but I am sure there are plenty of mad science types who would make use of such a feature in their laboratory. It's worth mentioning that no power supply or power adapter is included with the Miniware P906, so you'll have to use or purchase a power adapter that meets your requirements. For now I'll test the unit using a 100W power delivery USB adapter. Programming the voltage or current values is done by using the wheel, which has a resolution of 10mV or 10mA, or by holding the set button, the value is changed by 100 millivolt or 100 milliamp increments. Alright, let's connect the power supply to my Bryman meter and see how accurate the voltage control is. I tested several values starting off at 5 volts, then 10 volts, 20 volts, and lastly 30 volts, which all proved to be very accurate. However, what about voltage ripple? To test that, I connected my oscilloscope to the output without any load connected to the power supply, and the peak to peak ripple is 88 millivolts. Next, I connected my load tester, which was consuming almost 5 amps of current. The peak to peak ripple reduced to 22 millivolts. This may seem counterintuitive, and if you're wondering why the ripple reduced under load, the simplified answer is, even when a small amount of current is being drawn, inductors inside the power supply help to smooth out that ripple. I then increased the load to 6 amps, which is about the maximum I can output using the Type-C power adapter. The ripple increased slightly to 32 millivolts. To push the Miniware to its limits, I need a bigger power source, and for that I have my Ryden variable power supply. I connected everything together and performed the same test as before, only this time the ripple had increased to 128 millivolts. That's four times more ripple and the only thing that changed was the power source. And I knew exactly why. You see, the reason I chose the Raiden as a power source was because although it's very powerful, it also has a lot of ripple on the output. Ripple which the Miniware was struggling to filter out. So perhaps we should swap out the Ryden for a smoother power supply. I had a rummage through my various power supplies and found a Meanwell 36 volt power supply. I lowered the output voltage to 28 volts so I don't exceed the maximum input voltage on the Miniware. After connecting everything and with 8 amps of current being drawn, the ripple was 120 millivolts which is better, but still not exactly what Miniware claim their power supply is capable of. To properly evaluate the Miniware, I need a power source that has no ripple, and I have the answer in the form of an 18 volt Milwaukee battery. I connected the battery to the Miniware using a battery adapter I bought from Amazon. 
With no load, the ripple was down to 16 millivolts, and with an 8 amp load, the ripple was only 24 millivolts. Pretty damn impressive if you ask me. Now although these figures are impressive for a switching power supply such as the Miniware, the various power sources tested highlighted the fact that this Miniware product is only as smooth as the power source it's connected to, which is something to consider if you're looking at buying this and also a power adapter. When you consider the Miniware retails for about $133 at the time of filming, and then a good power adapter will set you back at least $100, and then if you want the display module, that's about another 80 bucks. That's over $300 worth of hardware. When you compare that to your average benchtop power supply that retails for about 100 bucks and essentially does the same thing, it's sort of a no-brainer. So is Miniware ripping us off then? Well, I don't think so. When you consider the small form factor, the various power source options including batteries, and the most important feature is the remote control and monitoring functionality, then the Miniware is a bargain if you need those features. However, if you don't need those features, then you're better off saving your dollars and buying a boring benchtop power supply for about a hundred bucks. Now full disclosure, this product was sent to me for review, however no money has changed hands and I haven't been asked to say anything in this review.